there is a growing invisible illness plaguing the country at an alarming rate, and its culprit is the size of a pinhead. The truth about Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses takes center stage. A leading neuro-Lyme specialist in the country will teach us what a tick-borne illness is, how to spot its symptoms, and how you can be treated. And then we'll talk with the founder of Project Lyme and learn what to do if you are bit by a tick, plus tips to help keep those ticks away. And a pop artist pours her heart out with a song inspired by her struggle with Lyme disease. That's later in the show. Good afternoon. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Amy Kemp. And I am Carrie Perry. Well, we've got a very special show for you. TikTok, a conversation about Lyme disease. There's a growing invisible illness plaguing the Northeast at an alarming rate. In fact, Pennsylvania has earned the number one spot over the last few years. The blue on the maps that you see indicates the confirmed cases. Now that's from 2012 to 2015. Just look how Pennsylvania is slowly but surely being colored in from east to west. I mean, it's really remarkable. All 67 Pennsylvania counties have reported Lyme disease and the number of cases in the state over that four-year period rapidly increased. Look at that to more than 7,000 confirmed cases in 2015. So 7,000, all infected by a tick, about the bite, about the, the size of a pinhead. You can see it right there on my hand, and that's actually generous. But that is ridiculously I tiny. I know. Ridiculously and, tiny. Right. So the question is, how does it make you sick? Okay. So when ticks bite, you cannot feel it latching onto the skin. They can remain on the skin and feed off of our blood for up to a week. The skin can become inflamed with a, a red bullseye or even a rash. But that's not always the case. And, and then, Amy, you have this part. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so interesting. When the tick is feeding, it's actually depositing the contents of its stomach into the host's blood. And that carries the Lyme disease, bacteria, and other co-infections. So then we wonder, like, how does the bacteria and co-infections affect its victims? Well, exactly. Now, Anson Flake was a high-energy business owner. But then one day, while out of town, he fell very ill. Very ill. Anson actually ended up in the ER. Little did he know that there was an underlying cause to a sudden illness. Anson was your typical husband, father, and businessman, completely unaware that his body was under siege. I was on a business trip and I got a big headache, like, like a migraine kind of headache I've never had before. Stiff neck, um, light hurting my eyes, and you know, I felt like something was, something was seriously wrong. Anson ended up in the ER where he was staying in Houston, Texas. It was determined that he had meningitis and was given IV antibiotics. He returned home just a few days later. Unfortunately, so did his illness. So when I got back that night, two days later, I got meningitis again. And it came back full, full blown. And then was hospitalized again and then the third or fourth day, the results came back from the Houston test. And they said, you've got Lyme disease and that's what's causing the meningitis. Anson was hit a few more times, always ending up in the hospital. And I got better after those hospitalizations. And then five years later, I thought I was over it. It came back again and I got meningitis again. Anson was given IV antibiotics for 11 weeks. I felt better for a period of time and then I relapsed again but in a different way. That period of time was five years, long enough for Anson to think that Lyme disease was in his rear view mirror. Instead, it was once again staring him down square on. It began later to manifest itself in really kind of a form of severe memory loss, um, difficult finding words, more, more extreme than brain fog. Like I couldn't figure out how to get from our house here to my in-laws house even though I'd been there hundreds of times. Anson thought he may have early Alzheimer's and through some online research he found a doctor who could properly diagnose this new condition, Nero Lyme. I got in touch with him, went to see him and then he diagnosed me. Anson suspects that he felt sick again because he provoked his already weakened immune system. That's what probably created the inflammation in my system that suppressed my thinking skills. Mm -hmm. And for the kind of job I had to not be able to think well or remember people's names, you start to have a work issue too. 
At the peak of his illness, Anson owned a company and one of their products made its way across the pond to the 2012 London Olympic Games. For what should have been an amazing experience, Anson was the sickest he had ever been. Anson's search for wellness outside of traditional medicine led to trying a hyperbaric chamber. This treatment helps the body's natural healing process by inhaling 100% oxygen. I thought hyperbaric was one of the top five, top three things I did, maybe the most important after initial antibiotics, mm -hmm. but also sleep. I mean, man. Were you tired a lot? Oh my gosh, I was tired. I just felt like a truck ran over me. And that's, I think that's a lot of Lyme disease, is managing the stress of the condition. Anson manages his stress in several ways. He learned to meditate to reduce stress and refocus and he does this daily for about 20 minutes. He also eats very well, steering clear of junk food and eating more vegetables, and he enjoys pre-made juices, having at least one a day. He credits his wife, Katie, for helping him stay on track, both mentally and physically. For Anson, convenience is the best way for him to maintain a healthy mind and body. So what's quality of life right now? Really good. Really, I mean, the best it's been in 10 years, and. I feel like there's just a lot of upside. You just can't give up. So that's part of hope is to be resilient, that there will be a solution. So don't give up on that. That's the key thing. Well, Anson has what he calls his tool chest, things that he, he can use when those symptoms gear up again. And he wants others struggling not to give up hope. Very good. Thanks so much, Carrie. Well, coming up next, one of the nation's leading neuro Lyme specialists is in our studio, Carrie Katz with Dr. Freed. After the break, you're watching Good Day PA on ABC 27. We're back with TikTok, a special Good Day PA on the reality of Lyme disease. Well, as we just learned in Anson Flake's story, a tick bite can lead to serious debilitating symptoms, including neurological impairment. We are very honored to have New York City, Manhattan-based Dr. Alina Freed here. And Dr. Freed is a neurological Lyme specialist for both Adults and children, thank you so much for being here today. Carrie, thanks so much for having me and for covering this important story. Well, it is such an important story. I want to kind of get right into things. We, we did learn a little bit about what happens when a tick bites you, but what's still kind of unclear is what Lyme disease is. Can you shed some light on that? Yes, Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that's typically transmitted by a tick bite. And I say typically because it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's essentially a vector-borne illness and the number one uh, vector-borne illness in the United States. So we know that there are some of those early symptoms and we want folks to know what they are. So the early symptoms, and they are on the CDC website, uh, which a lot of them are nonspecific. Mm -hmm. Headaches, fevers, joint pain, plus or minus a rash. I say that because often uh, people think that you have to have a rash in order to be diagnosed with Lyme disease. However, in fact, that's only present in about 20% of the cases. Right, exactly. My daughter was one that did not have the rash, but that's then she right. had all these symptoms. So I know what I did. I went straight to get some help. So give us some suggestions on what to do. Right, so if you think that you may uh, be exposed to Lyme disease, I would definitely see your physician. Uh, I would explain to them why you would think that if you've been in an endemic area or, di or did some outdoor activities or a family member or a pet uh, has been diagnosed with Lyme disease recently, uh, which would be a red flag for a physician. So we know that a lot of people, they get the headache, they get the fever, they get the body aches. But one of the things that's crazy, neurological Lyme, those neurological symptoms, what are they? Well, actually, Hansen covered uh, a lot of them uh, in the piece previously. Uh, neurologic Lyme is very complex, mm -hmm. uh, and Lyme disease in general can mimic a lot of different illnesses. And it's essentially uh, the bug gets into the brain and infect, infects the brain directly. However, there's a second component where there's uh, some inflammation of the brain and an autoimmune phenomenon that can lead to a lot of symptoms that you may not think of as Lyme initially. For example, I always talk about ADHD or ADD that we see in children. I believe that every child who has a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD should be checked for an infection such as Lyme disease. Issues with memory, 
um, issues with concentration. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of neuropsychiatric issues such as depression or anxiety that's not treated easily by uh, your psychiatrist and you have persistent symptoms, uh, I think it's a good idea to get checked for Lyme disease in that case. And of course, more severe cases, which Hansen was touching on, such as uh, dementias, mm -hmm. um, early onset dementias, or even Alzheimer's, MS, Parkinson's disease, ALS. So as I mentioned to you, it's a slew of different conditions. And typically, if you have these symptoms and they're not getting better by the usual treatment or you're not able to hold the disease process, you should definitely look into something like Lyme disease. And I say something like Lyme disease is because I know you yeah, know right. uh, it's not just the one bacterial infection. Yeah, you can and have so a infection. So exactly. Yeah. It's important to be tested by a Lyme literate physician yeah. to figure out what you have, especially in these complex cases. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Freed. We know that people can go get more information from um, alinafreedmd.com. And we're going to be right back with some tips to help you stay safe. In our continued effort to provide education on Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses, we want you to know that prevention can keep you from getting bit by a tick. Heather Hurst, founder of Project Lyme, is here to share the best prevention tips and teach us how to safely remove a tick. First of all, again, you're the founder of Project Lyme. Tell me what that organization does. So Project Lyme is focused on awareness and education for Lyme disease. Very good. That summarizes <laughs> it, right? So we're going to talk about the do's and the don'ts. What shouldn't we do? Well, it's a really bad idea to just go running into the deep woods or running through tall grasses because that's a very heavy tick habitat. So do's would be to walk in the center of trails or you can uh, prepare by wearing uh, tick repellent like this tick tock or tick repellent that has 20%, at least 20% DEET. Okay. You can also wear clothing that's treated with tick repellent, okay. um, permethrin, or purchasing clothing that's uh, made by insect shield. Socks are great because tick ticks typically come from the ground up, mm -hmm. so okay. wearing socks like that are, is a great idea. Wearing pants and tucking them into your socks is also really great. It's, it's sometimes it's a tough sell because I hear also like wear long sleeves, yeah. but it's summertime. That's why you're running around the you know the grasses and everything anyway but you just really have to do these things to prevent right it's important to to cover up but there's so many other things you can do and checking yourself when you come home is also a really good way and then when you do get home there's actually something you can do with your clothing mm -hmm. you're supposed to put it in the dryer is that right yes so when you get home and you know you've been exposed to ticks you can throw it in the dryer for on high heat for 10 minutes and that should kill the ticks Okay, so let's talk, they're all different kinds of ticks though. Mm -hmm. So how do we know which one we're looking at? What should we be worried about? What should we look for? So, <laughs> if we're going to put them on the screen. <laughs> we're going to put them on the like, Here's a so, dog tick. Should we okay, be worried about Okay, there it is. All right. So you can see that there's two different ticks there. And what, so if you have a tick and you remove it, you need to save it. And, and then you can go online and look at you know, a, a chart like that okay. and um, identify. And it's good to identify it because different ticks carry different pathogens. So save okay. it, go online, look at the ticks, and um, then go you'll have there. that we'll much from there. Yeah. No, if you do find a tick and it's on you, how do we get it off? What's the best, safest way? The best thing is to use fine tip tweezers and tickies which you have here is a mm -hmm. great product. It's got the fine tip tweezers and um, it's got two ends. One end is better for using on your pets and the other is great for humans. So removing it, getting really close to this skin and pulling upwards in a steady, with steady pressure. Okay. And, but the, the key is to remove a tick as fast as possible. Very good. And of course, there's so much to talk about. We can't talk about it all now. You can go to the Project Lyme website, projectlyme.org, for much more information. Heather, thanks for being with us today. Next on Good Day PA, a pop artist whose debut hit was inspired by her battle with Lyme disease along with a childhood disease is here with us. Marina Morgan shares her story next ahead of a live performance. We'll be right back with more TikTok.
that is Marina Morgan. She is singing her lungs out in a proclamation that her disease won't keep her grounded in her inspirational song, Paralyzed. Marina joins us live. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, your voice is amazing. Thank you, and thank oh. you so much for having me. So we want to talk about this. This, this Paralyzed is like your fight song. Yes. What is that fight? That fight is Lyme disease. I got diagnosed a little over a year ago, and it's just about the struggle and how hard it's been the journey to recovery. Now, I know you had a childhood illness to begin with, but yes. you say that is in the past, and really what you're dealing with now is the Lyme. Give me just a little bit of what's going on. Um, I just, I basically have issues with my walking. I have, I'm very off balance. I lost the vision in my right eye, which thankfully has come back after um, treatment through IV uh, therapy. And um, I had esophagus issues, had trouble eating, and just overall fatigue. The fatigue is horrible. Uh, now, the upshot of all of this is that you were Elvis Duran's Artist of the Month. Yes. That is amazing. Congratulations you. to you. You must feel like, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Marina, we are going to be coming back after the break. And, folks, you are not going to want to miss this. It's going to be amazing. She's going to perform Paralyzed. So stay with us right here on ABC 27. I want to thank all of our guests for showing up today. Love yes. it. Oh, they were terrific. And now it's time to hear from Marina Morgan and her song inspired by her battle with childhood illness and Lyme disease. Here she is with her new breakout single, Paralyzed. Trapped in the dark can't even feel my heart beating Will I fall apart? Or is this just phantom feeling? But I refuse to lose my mind I'm not giving up on my life 